Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and welcome to the Eternal Love Quilt Along. Today we're going to be finishing off all of the edges of the appliques with a zigzag stitch. This is going to reduce any fraying that could happen on the edges of the appliques. It's going to finish it off nicely and when you change thread color a lot to match the threads, the fabric colors on the quilt, then it can also add a punch of color to the quilt as well. So let's get on the machine and learn how to do this zigzag finishing stitch together. So here are two Eternal Love quilts and I wanted to show you both of them because I did the blanket stitching two different ways. So in this case, I sealed off all of those raw edges by blanket stitching as a quilt top. So this was just one layer as you can see and all of that decorative stitching ended up on the back of the quilt top not the actual quilt. And so I have lots of, you know, little tie-offs here. I'd pull the thread tails to the back and just tie them in a knot and that's perfectly fine. And it sealed off all of those raw edges really nicely. Now as far as the type of stitch that you're doing, you know, how wide, how long, all that good stuff, this is really going to be something you have to experiment with. You know, grab a, a little scrap of fabric and just play and maybe even fuse a shape on top of it and just play with stitching along the edge and play with that length and play with that width until you find exactly the stitch that you like. And you can do this with zigzag stitching, blanket stitching. You can do, you can mix it up and play with a lot of different decorative stitches on your machine. So I encourage you to really experiment and play with it. Uh, but understand you can do this as a quilt top and I think this is the method that's most common. Most quilters will just go ahead and do the blanket stitching as a quilt top. I'm gonna do it a little differently. I have already basted my Eternal Love quilt here and I've already started doing the blanket stitching and in this case it's blanket stitching plus quilting because we're actually blanket stitching and we're securing all those layers together. Now the downside is your stitching is going to show on the back of the quilt. If that gives you heart palpitations, <laughs> don't do it that way. But to me this is actually going to save us a little time because that blanket stitching is also going to be like an outline. So because that outline's gonna be there, it's gonna be around her neck and around all of these pieces of hair, I don't have to then go in and do another set of outline quilting with free motion quilting after that. So it is actually a little bit of a time saver to do your blanket stitching as a quilt, a layered quilt with batting and backing versus a quilt top. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about basting and batting and backing. Uh, so I basted here with pen mores. These are flower head pens that I just put a little bend in them so that way they pop up real easy through the quilt. So I just insert it through all three layers, pop it up, and then this is a pen more. It's just a silicone nugget. You stick it on this sharp end of the pen and poke it through and then it stays nice and secure, but as you can see, they are really easy to remove when you need to remove them, which makes it much easier to deal with on your machine. These are a lot easier in your hands. That's why I love them for basting. Uh, so as far as batting goes, I'm using a very thin batting here. This is Quilter's Dream Poly in the request thickness. So this is very thin. I like it because it gives you a nice look for a wall hanging. It's gonna hang very flat, especially when we put a good bit of quilting into it. It's gonna hang nice and flat. Uh, it's not gonna give us very much definition, meaning we're not gonna get real puffy motifs. And there's a reason for that. Because we're doing the blanket stitching and quilting at the same time, things can go just a little bit loosey-goosey and wobbly, right? And because of that, we want to keep the quilt flat. Now, if you want a really lofty, puffy batting, then you should do it like this and do your blanket stitching as a quilt top, right? And that way, everything's secure, everything's stable. Those, those appliques are not going anywhere. You can use any batting that you want to whenever you do it this way. So just keep that in mind and think about the batting and the look that you're really going for. I think wool looks great. It's a wonderful batting to use for wall hangings, but it's just very squishy. And I would have a hard time being able to control that batting and be able to stitch along all of these appliques really smoothly without things starting to go just a little bit weird. 
So that's just my opinion and that's my plan. I've got it all basted up, ready to go. So let's jump on the machine and start blanket stitching. So I'm here on the machine. I've set up my queen size supreme slider here to the left of the machine because I need to use the feed dogs for blanket stitching. I have just a regular zigzag foot here attached to my machine and I'm going to work first with a decorative stitch and for the Eversone 20 this is going to be stitch number 40. So I'm going to dial up to that and I also want to double check my stitch length and width and this is going to be something you really want to take your time and experiment with and figure out the stitch length and width that you want to use. I'm setting mine to a 2.5 wide and 2 millimeters long blanket stitch but this is going to be something that might vary from one machine to another and also by your taste. So please experiment with it and see what you like best. Okay, so now here I'm sliding the quilt into the machine and this is quilting. So I go on ahead and grab my quilting gloves and get everything situated so that way I really get a good grip on the quilt. Now it's really tricky to start in a tiny little narrow area like that. So I'm actually going to start in the middle of this arm. And the nice thing is every time that you change your stitch, it always resets to the very beginning. So I know that I'm right now on the far right side of the stitch. And that's the side that's basically going to be off the edge of that applique that I'm stitching along, either in the background or into another applique. OK, so now I'm going to start stitching. And this stitch takes one stitch forward and back and then it takes one stitch over. So you just really need to get to know your stitch and be patient with it. So, you know, some of this is just practice and some of this is just getting to, used to your machine and knowing what it's gonna do at any given time. Uh, I know I've had other machines that don't do the back stitch between the stitches to the left, so it really does change. Now, if ever you get to the point where you're feeling like, ah, oh, that kind of needs to rotate, you know, it's just not staying, the edge of that blanket stitching is not staying in line with the edge of the applique, then just stop and rotate. You want to stop with the needle always in the down position, so that way it's not going to veer away from the applique. The one thing you want to make sure of is you want to make sure that that stitching off the edge of the applique, and there it was, in purple fabric, now I'm going right on top of this off-white fabric. You want to just make sure that that's right along the edge. It's not gapping out really far away, but it's also not, um, it's not getting on top of the applique, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm going to significantly slow down, and I'm going to take one stitch at a time, and I can do that just simply by tapping my foot on the foot pedal, which is really nice. If your machine has this uh, function, it might be something you want to do, especially around points like this. So here we go. I've rotated it just a bit. I'm basically wanting to stitch right up to that point. And then now I'm going to lift the foot. I want to really be able to see clearly when you do this. So I'm basically right on the tip of that applique. And if you're not right on the tip, that's okay too. What you can do is you can just hand guide it. So I think that's what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to hand guide. And so what I'm doing is basically alternating from shifting the foot over ever so slightly and rotating the hand wheel myself and dropping that needle in the down position. Okay, so now that stitch is wanting to go straight forward. I think I'm going to go right across the tip. And now I'm going to rotate the whole quilt around and stitch down the opposite edge of that applique. There we go. Blanket stitching is definitely one of those things. It is probably my least favorite thing in all of quilting. Uh, I just don't, I don't particularly like any part of it, whether it's zigzag stitching or decorative stitching or any kind of stitching. It is very tedious and it's like this. It is, you know, some of it, a good portion of it sometimes has to be hand guided. There's not much you can do about it. Uh, and the one thing that's really nice, though, is that if you make a mistake, just keep in mind, we are going to throw more thread at this. <laughs> so you can always add more thread in the quilting, and that can hide some mistakes that happen if you make mistakes with your blanket stitching right now. 
So you're gonna throw more thread at it. You can always add more stitching and that can hide some stuff. So if you feel like the tips of your appliques just aren't there, you know, like I feel like that tip that I just stitched could probably be improved a little bit. Don't worry about it. You know, we're gonna go back over this with some more thread and you can absolutely hide that. So I'm coming up here on another tip for this applique and this gets really narrow. And unfortunately, you know, every machine has limitations and this particular machine has a limitation that you really can't shrink some of these decorative stitches very much. You can't shrink them down really, really super tiny. So I might have to hand guide where I lift the needle up and reposition the foot slightly so that I know the needle's gonna drop down into the right spot and then kind of inch it forward just a little bit, lift up on the foot, drop the needle down where I want it to go. So that might happen to you too. Every machine is different and kind of figuring out all of these nuances is part of the fun. And if you're not satisfied with what you're getting, just keep in mind that, you know, some machines don't even have a zigzag fun function, you know, <laughs> my treadle machines can't even do a zigzag stitch. So, you know, we're quite lucky to have what we have. Uh, and I think no matter what, I would probably be hand guiding this tip simply because it's really tricky to get that and have it turn out just exactly right. Okay, so this is looking good. I'm really happy with that. But as the needle swings over right here, I know I could, prob I could possibly overshoot that fabric. But I mean, it's such a tiny, tiny amount. Some of, I think, I'll be honest, I think some of the reason why I don't like blanket stitching is because it really starts to hit my perfectionist tendencies, you know? And if it's not absolutely 100% perfect, I tend to rip things out. So that's just an action learning tip there. I think that you can be a lot more forgiving and a lot less obsessive, and you'll probably be a lot happier with your quilt. Okay, now as I stitch down, I'm coming up to the stitching where I started. I wanna go on ahead and tie off and bury this thread tail. And this is quilting, so I wanna make sure that these thread tails are hidden in the middle layer of the quilt. So I tied them in a knot here. Now I'm gonna take a cheater needle and run it into that quilt top. And I think I actually got between the two layers of the applique in the background, it's kind of sticky, but you can pull it through and you know that thread is not going anywhere. So there we go, just clip it off. So that's what I'm gonna do to take care of all of the thread breaks in this quilt. And once you hide it like that, it's completely invisible. You can't tell where you started and stopped. There we go. And now I'll stitch on down and try and match up as perfectly with where I started as I can. So I'm gonna slow down and take one stitch at a time. Whoop. Okay, this is perfect. One more stitch. And actually, I think that's it. I'll let that one continue. There we go. I think that looks just perfect. So I did that blanket stitching all around the goddess's arms and then through her neck and face. And then I decided to switch stitches. I went to a zigzag stitch and stitched around her uh, shirt here in purple. And I switched to purple thread so it would blend. And then I kept that zigzag stitch around the baby. And what was nice is I was able to stitch the baby almost continuous line. I started right here and stitched around this shape then I came down across the top and then just hand guided, I switched to a straight stitch to stitch down and then came around the face there, stitch, switched to a straight stitch again and was able to knock out that last little leg. So that was almost continuous line. And it's really good to take a minute to look at your quilt and figure out ways that you can reduce your thread breaks. Like through here, I went all the way around that bottom edge. Uh, I think through here, I went down her arm, over, up, did a little straight stitch or hand guided to get over through that hair section and then came right down along the side of her shirt. So there's ways of reducing your thread breaks and your stops and starts so that way you can quilt uh, and do the stitching a little faster.
And I've got to say, I like the zigzag stitching more. I'm able to shrink it down a lot more, so it's a smaller stitch. I think it looks better. It's easier to deal with uh, in corners and points. I just think it looks really good. So I think, honestly, my opinion on blanket stitching has changed. I no longer really like the straight stitch. Uh, on my applique, I really prefer the zigzag. Now, just in case you're wondering what it looks like on the back, here it is flipped over. Now, I put blue fabric on the back of my quilt because I knew most of this decorative stitching would be in blue for her hair. And as you can see, the only stuff that really shows up a lot is her skin color, that uh, off-white color. But, you know, if you used a darker thread color there, that would blend in a little bit better too. So that gives you an idea of where we're at and where we're going. And I think it does help to get all of those shapes knocked out uh, or get all the hair knocked out. Do one or the other and then move on to the other uh, area of the quilt. And right now I'm working into this blue section. So we've got uh, actually quite a lot of blue hair and I've got the darkest blue color right now set up on my machine. And this is another situation where you just wanna take your time and run your finger over the quilt and kind of figure out, okay, well, if I start there and do the zigzag stitching down and around that, then maybe I could go keep going and stitch down here. And then um, that piece of fabric actually overlaps that piece. So that would be quite a lot to knock out all at once. So that's what I think I'm gonna do. And let's actually start right here on this tip. This time I'm actually gonna start right on that tippy tip and show you how to deal with that. And there might be, again, a little bit of hand guiding just to get started. And the zigzag stitch that I have chosen, I've just done a regular, you know, straight lace back and forth zigzag stitch. I've set up my stitch length to be one millimeter and my stitch width to be two millimeters. So it's a very simple, small stitch. Okay, now I'm going to hand guide, making sure that that needle is swinging and hitting the way I want. Now it's really nice if you are having trouble with speed control, like you're hitting your foot pedal and it just seems to be going too fast and you have a speed slider on your machine, use it, you know, dial down your speed so your machine can't take off on you. There we go. So I'm just taking a few stitches at a time and then I'm in a deep curve. So I need to stop and pivot the quilt every, every so often. So I just lift up slightly on the foot while the needle is swung out to the right side because the curve is curving this way. And so I want to pivot and change the angle of the quilt while I'm off the edge of the applique. So remember, pivot off the edge of the applique. And that way your pivot will look nice and smooth. Now you might have been wondering why I'm not using a walking foot for this. I find whenever you use a really thin batting, and that's what I used on this quote, a really, really thin batting, that you don't need to use a walking foot. You can use a regular applique foot. It's really nice if you have an open toe applique foot, but even just a normal zigzag foot, like the one I'm using here, that comes standard with the machine, that works too. As long as you can see your needle, you can see what you're stitching over clearly, this can work just fine. So every once in a while I need to just slow down, make sure that needle is hitting exactly where it's supposed to and that I'm pivoting properly as well. So here you can see I've stitched further down that lock of hair and this is what happens to the quilt as I'm stitching down. I'm rolling it up. And this is one of those reasons it's really important to make sure that those pieces have fused really well to that background because doing this much manipulation to the quilt is going to start putting pressure and stress on those appliques and that can definitely start lifting them off if they haven't been fused well to the surface. So keep that in mind and make sure if you're still on the fusing process that you've definitely got those pieces locked down tightly. Okay, so I'm gonna slow down now because I'm going into this really intense spiral. And this is the tightest spiral in the quilt. So that's why I wanted to show it to you and how to work through this area carefully. So I'm actually gonna slow down my machine all the way. I'm gonna move my speed slider down to the slowest that it can go and that way I just really have good control over how fast the machine goes. And then I'm gonna stop and I'm just lifting up that foot here with the presser foot lifter 
and I'm doing that about every four stitches that I take because every four stitches or so, especially when you get into this tight spiral, that's about as much as you can take at a time. And this is a little hard even for me to see because it is dark purple. That's the shirt that in the background of this lock of hair and then it's a dark blue lock of hair. I hope you can see how I'm just pivoting and manipulating the foot and going slow. And the nice thing about it is the thread color, this is uh, Isocord Blueberry, it almost perfectly blends in with this fabric color. And so even if I stitch a little bit off, is that the end of the world? No, absolutely not. It's gonna blend in. And then of course, we're gonna throw even more thread at it whenever we go in and quilt this quilt. Okay, so now I'm here at the tip and I just wanna be careful as I stitch right up to that tip. That's kind of the delicate spot with any applique. There's not a lot of fabric right there. So I don't wanna stitch into that too many times. I just wanna stitch right to the tip and then pivot the quilt around and start working my way in the other direction. And I'm gonna hand guide a stitch or two just to make sure that I've nicely locked that in place. I'm gonna lift up on my foot. Whoops, you don't wanna slide the quilt away because that will cause you to have to, you'll have a loose stitch if you slide too far away. But that looks good, I'm happy with that. Yay! There we go. Alrighty, now I'll curl the quilt up and start working back the other way. And the nice thing about a zigzag stitch too is because it's there's not like a right side to it or a wrong side to it. It's not like a left edged or a right edged stitch. It looks just as good on both, you know, from both directions versus a blanket stitch has that, you know, straight line running along the right edge, which means that you've got to always make sure that you're running your applique along that direction. With the zigzag stitch, you don't have that issue. So, you know, if it comes up and we, you know, go down that next lock of hair, and we're using the opposite edge of the applique on the, you know, the, sorry, the stitch on the outside of the applique, then it doesn't matter. Now, some machines have the ability to do what's called a reflection, meaning that you take the stitch, the decorative stitch, and you reflect it, you flip it. Uh, this machine is very entry level that I'm working on right now, and it doesn't have that function. So you've got to pick stitches that you have, number one, on your machine and that work for you. You know, not everybody has a machine that has every single stitch and every single stitch function. So I really hope that you can see that even with an entry level machine, you can still do fantastic applique. Just might need to do a zigzag stitch instead of another decorative stitch for that. So I'm just gonna continue working my way up this lock up here and I'll meet you back here when I'm ready to work on this troublesome spot right here around her head and then swing down for the next lock of hair. So I've made it up here around her head and I went on ahead and tied off that thread tail so that way I can stitch right into this area. It's not in my way. And I'm just going to stitch right up to that point where all of the fabrics come together and I probably will try and avoid stitching right on that point again because you know you stitch through fusible fabric fused fabric maybe once or twice and that's about all you want to do in the same spot because it really does start to fray and break down so just be careful and you can see I'm hand guiding I'm combining lifting the foot and dropping the needle down got it in the right position now what I'm doing is I'm looking at that edge of the applique that's coming down here. That's when I wanna be stitching along now. So here we go, stop with the needle down, lift the foot, rotate the quilt, and stitch along that curve. So there's a few places where you can keep stitching. Uh, some of these locks of hair, you're just gonna to have to stitch, you know, one lock and then break thread, you know, right here in this big one. I could probably be able to zigzag down that whole area, then come switch to a straight stitch through that little section and then attach and stitch this section. So there's definitely some that you can chain together and that will reduce your thread breaks and certainly speed up the process. So as you can see, this is really fairly simple. It is a little slow and I would advise keeping your speed limited. Uh, but other than that, 
this is not hard. You know, it's a simple zigzag stitch. You can go from the left side of the applique or the right side of the applique. One quick tip, make sure that the edge that you are stitching on is the edge that's overlapping. I made a mistake right here in the baby's face. I wasn't paying attention and I started blanket stitching along the outer edge of the baby's face. And then I realized, wait a minute, actually that Bermuda fabric, that greenish blue fabric is actually overlapping that piece of off white. So I didn't need to be edge stitching that, I needed to be edge stitching the piece of blue green fabric. So what you can do is just feel along the edge of the applique. You're wanting to stitch along the fabric that is on top of the other fabric. That's what you're edge stitching along. And that's what's gonna provide such a nice outline for all of your appliques. Now there's one last place that's really tricky and that's the eyes and the mouth. So we're gonna speed along and get to that next. I'll show you how to do your zigzag stitching over these tricky tiny pieces. So I'm here on the upper eye. This is the eyebrow actually. And these are really thin pieces of black fabric that we cut out and fused in place. So very first step as usual is to pull up your thread tails. So that way I drop my needle down, bring it up and that brought my bobbin thread up to the surface. And I got some really long thread tails here. So I'm gonna clip that just a little shorter so it's not in my way. Okay, so this is definitely the case for hand guiding. And I might even take my stitch width down to one millimeter and it clicked there. So it's definitely going to be narrower. There we go. So I'm gonna take maybe, oops, yep, I could tell that was not quite right. You just have to watch it. Watch the swing of your needle and see if it's going to clear the edges of that black applique. And if it's not, then you wanna either hand guide it and click it wider, uh, you know, and make sure that it's, it's falling on both sides or you wanna adjust your stitch width. Right, right now I'm at two millimeters so some machines tolerate um, hand guiding okay, some machines don't. And you just need to play with that. Uh, maybe even cut out a second set of eye shapes. You got plenty of fabric uh, if you went with the quilt kit or if you use the you know nice three inch piece of black and you had that cut out for this, then you've got plenty of fabric to play with. So you could cut out another set of eyes and maybe stitch this as an experiment and just see what your machine would do if you hand guided all of these stitches. Some machines tolerate it and some machines don't. I had one machine once that just really hated it when I used my hand wheel. <laughs> so you'd really never know. So here I'm just hand guiding those last few stitches and then I'm ending with one stitch on the end. Now, is that absolutely perfect? As you can see, some of those stitches kind of got off the edges of the applique a little bit. It's not quite as perfect as I would like, but this is one of those things that I feel like from a distance, this is going to be just fine. When you are looking at it from 10 inches away, you know, right here on top of it, it's probably not gonna be your favorite. Another option, if this just really scares you or you just don't like the idea of it, uh, another option you have is to hand stitch on top. This would be more of a couching that you could take your black thread and go on top of it that way and uh, stitch over those pieces. You don't wanna leave them unsecured. That I know is a temptation for a lot of people is, oh, okay, well, I'll just you know not stitch over that. Well, if you don't stitch over a fusible applique, it's not permanent and it could potentially flake off uh, and it certainly might if you ever washed your quilt. So definitely keep that in mind. You've gotta have some stitching going through the fusible applique uh, and into the background fabric. Now this time I'm gonna try no hand guiding. I'm just going to depend on my stitch width setting. So here I'm at 1.5 millimeters and it's looking like I need to go a little wider. So now I'm gonna just judge where my needle is falling. Now I'm gonna stop and rotate because there's a nice curve in that eye shape. And I'm just watching the needle dropping. I've got my machine set to the slowest setting. Now the eye is tapering down and getting smaller. So I'm gonna dial that down to 1.5 millimeters. It's getting even smaller really quick. So I'm gonna down to one millimeter now. Let's see if I can go any smaller. Yep, 
and this is 0.5 millimeters, and then one more stitch right at the end. So it's up to you which one you like better, whether it is just letting the machine control the stitch width with no hand guiding on the hand wheel at all, or if you like the idea of hand guiding and making sure that your needle is following exactly where you want it. As you can see, neither way is completely perfect. Uh, and again, we are gonna throw more thread at this. I'm gonna stitch around these eyes and we're gonna stitch in her face with a filler design. So any tiny little mistakes and issues I think are going to be covered up nicely. You could also go back in with a Pigma pen and color in, <laughs> you know, kind of give her a little bit of eyeshadow a, a little bit, you know, and kind of hide the stitches that kind of overlap just a bit. Now, the last little troublesome section is the red lips. We're gonna do this exact same way, being very careful, hand guiding, you know, making sure that our zigzag is really small so that these shapes come out just exactly right. So I'm gonna switch thread colors and we're gonna work on that next. So again, I switched thread colors and for the eyes and lips, I actually am using a different thread. I'm using our fill thread and this is the black and the red. And the reason I'm doing that is Isocord, my usual thread, has kind of a subtle sheen to it and it will stand out. I like that on the edges of things like her face and her shirt and her hair, but I don't like that particularly over her eyes and lips. So I use our fill because it has a very matte look. It doesn't have any sort of shiny reflection and that helps it blend in with the fabric that much better. So again, this is one of those situations you wanna trace your finger over it and figure out a way you can go continuous line. And so there's two different ways you can start on the bottom of her uh, lower lip and go around to the point and then swing around that upper lip, or you can do the opposite, swing around the upper lip, then come down and around the lower lip. No right or wrong way of doing it, I'll be completely honest. I think I'm gonna start with the upper lip first. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna drop the needle down right on the tip of that lip, double check my stitch length. I'm back up to two millimeters here. Actually, I think I'm gonna drop down. We're gonna be at 1.5 millimeters. You want a really uh, very narrow stitch. So that's 1.5 millimeters wide. Okay, and then I'm making sure that the needle is gonna swing and hit exactly where I want it to. So what you can do is drop that needle down just right at the edge of the quilt and then shift the foot until you're in the position you wanna be in. Okay, and so now we're stitching slowly. And then kind of curl up the quilt so it's under control. And then here's where we start to pivot. Lift up on that foot, on that presser foot do one single stitch in and then one single stitch out, rotate, one single stitch in, one single stitch out. So it's this one stitch at a time little dance that we're gonna do, especially around those deepest curves. Oops, and so I see how I took one extra stitch. I'm gonna have to shift it around and make sure it ends up in exactly the right position. You wanna try and control the machine the best you can and do your pivots. Remember, always do the major pivots and movement of your quilt off the edge of the applique in the background. Okay, and that background can be, you know, her skin, it can, it's whatever you're, um, you're stitching this onto. It's whatever's underneath that piece of fabric. There we go, and now this should be fairly easy because we're kind of through that trickiest spot. There we go, stitch all the way down and swing off the edge. Now this is a situation where I'm on the right side of my zigzag. If I take a stitch, I'd be stitching way off into her face. <laughs> we don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna lift the needle by rotating the hand wheel backwards. I'm going to slide the whole quilt over and then drop the needle back down again. There we go. Little trick there, some machines, again, like to go backwards. Some machines will totally gag on you if you do that, so watch out for that. And this is not a position where you want your machine to gag, so don't push it. If you think your machine might not like that, don't push it in this section. You know, that's why we did all the other applique. You know, we did the hair, the baby, the shirt, the skin, all of that before tackling the lips and the eyes. This is the thing I think you should leave for last. 
because it is, as you can see, the trickiest. So you want to really have a good idea of what your machine can handle, what it likes, and whether you can hand guide or back up stitches or not before you tackle this section. Okay, one stitch at a time, one in, one out. Lift and rotate. You only have a few more stitches to go. <laughs> there we go. And maybe two more to get right up to that upper lip. So there we go, that's the lips and the eyes. Now, of course, I've got a lot of thread tails here that I'll have to tie off and bury. So make sure to watch the other video that I have on tying off thread tails, really quick and easy. Uh, now, as far as these dark thread tails, you wanna be careful with this because if you run that dark thread tail right underneath her skin, it might show. So try and run that thread parallel with her eye so that way it kind of hides in the middle layer of the quilt and it kind of hides right along that darker fabric. Same thing with her lips, kind of hide those thread tails uh, in either, in this one in this case, I'm probably gonna take that into the background this way, and this one I'll run it kind of parallel with her bottom lip, so that way it'll hide, definitely. Um, now, if this just really <laughs> seemed a little bit too fiddly to you, or you don't think that you can do it perfectly, please understand there's a lot more ways of doing applique. I encourage you to look up other videos. You could do this with free motion quilting. You could stitch on top of it with like free motion embroidery. You know, you can color it in a little bit to hide little mistakes. So don't let that be the deal breaker in your quilt. It is the most challenging section. That's why I left it for last. So I really want you to take your time on it, and really get the game you know, figured out with applique, with your zigzag stitch, with your blanket stitch, before you tackle this section. So that way you know exactly what your machine can handle before you start really tackling these tiny itsy bitsy little pieces. And here's what it looked like whenever I finished blanket stitching and zigzag stitching my eternal love goddess quilt. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot and you're ready to start finishing off the edges of all of those appliques. Now, one thing you probably noticed, I was doing this zigzag stitching when my quilt was a quilt, meaning I had layered the top, the batting, and the backing already together and then started the zigzag stitching. And that's actually a little uncommon. Most people will do this finishing stitch when the quilt is still just a top, a single layer. And the reason being, whenever you do zigzag stitching through all three layers, it comes through on the back. So this is the other version of Eternal Love that I've made, and here you can see that stitching comes through the back. So this may be something that you just can't stand to see in the back of your quilt. Personally, to me, that just looks like a nice thick outline, like think of a coloring book. That's the way I look at it. And I really also like the fact that it saves me an extra step. Uh, once I get that zigzag stitching done, I consider all of the applique shapes to be outlined and I can go on ahead and fill in those spaces with different quilting designs. I don't feel the need to go back in and do more outline stitching around the edges of the zigzag stitch. But that's just my opinion. I want you to understand that there's no right or wrong way of making any quilt. You just need to find the techniques and steps that really work best for you and create the quilt that you really want to make. So if it just really bothers you, the idea of having a zigzag stitch show up on the back of your quilt, it's very simple. Leave your quilt as just a quilt top and do the zigzag stitching then and then layer your quilt with batting and backing and then outline stitch with matching thread each of those applique shapes. So I hope that you learned a lot from this video and you can see there's multiple ways of handling an applique quilt. That's what makes them so much fun. Now, if you'd like to join in and make the eternal love quilt with me, all you need is a copy of the quilt pattern. You can find it at leahday.com slash eternal love comes with full-size templates so you can print your shapes directly onto the fusible web and that saves you a lot of time. So check out the pattern at leahday.com slash eternal love. Until next time, let's go quilt.